Ha! Ah, making a video. Yay! Uh, anyway, it's been a little while. Um, nothing really going on. It's uh, kind of dismal, actually. Kind of disappointing. Um, you know, the old fan had the TV thing and everything. I thought that would generate a little bit of something. Nothing. <laughs> so, and there's just a little discussion. No one's saying anything at all interesting. So anyway, I did do a whatever, one of those rooms, uh, Snake Pliskinus room, called G versus E. Uh, um, you know, we talked for a few hours, actually. I'm only a couple of hours public, but, you know. And, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I covered lots of subjects. There was just no useful comments on his video. Um, and, you know, just sort of like one of my videos. And, um, it, yeah, just kind of disappointing, just because, like I said, we did cover a lot of subjects, I think. Anyway, it didn't went quite adequately. Um, you know, the old um, snake pliskiness thing. Anyway, um, Ray, we got along okay. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Strange world. So, you know, this is probably something to do on graph science, but there's this PBS space time. I don't even know what this is. PBS Digital Studios, some douchebag, stupid... I mean, this is just such crap. So I probably should do all of these episodes, because every single one of them is crap. Um, and so anyway, this one's on why we haven't seen the aliens yet. Um, <laughs> you know, they have, they have a scientific theory. Uh, just, you know, this is just so... You know, such a perfect example of just how clueless human beings are. You know, super clueless in this guy's case. Um, like, you know, yeah, like you'd think it would be a great idea to have oceans on all the other planets. Oceans full of, what? Octopuses and sharks. The smartest things. Tuna fish, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what life does, okay? I mean... Life has evolved for four billion years in the ocean, and that's the best it came up with in the ocean. I mean, the the whales and the porpoises, you know, they, they went on land first, got a brain, and then came back. But, you know, yeah, it didn't, didn't do anything brilliant, did it? Lots of organisms with enough brains to engineer all kinds of silly solutions to the living problem, right? Going flat, living in little crevices, gathering crap. Having zapping, you know, there's even little shrimps that, you know, can move their, their claw so fast that it gives people concussions, you know. Silly tools. That's what nature creates, is silly little assassination tools. It doesn't, big brains have nothing to do with this evolution thing. And the, the likelihood of what life is going to be, if you stick life on a planet, you know, have a little bit of life on the end of your finger and you just stick it on planets... You're not going to make something graceful and beautiful. And even if you've made something like a human being, are you proud of human beings? Do you think we've done really, really well? Really? Hmm? You know, it's just so obviously just such a stupid delusion of accomplishment and... And it's all all done by assholes like this douchebag. You know, he's all full full of his ego shit still. But wait till you hit 50 or 60 or 70. And, and all you start watching is the pieces falling off. The diseases taking control. Um, this isn't some wonderful parade. It's just a silly delusion. You're just chasing your fucking, you know, your ego, which essentially is manufactured in your, your nutsack. And that's all there is, jackass. <clears throat> so why would anybody even think, Joe, why, why would somebody be a little bit concerned that there isn't a bunch of other humans out there for us to have a war with? What if they were purple? I'm sure we'd be racist. <laughs> yeah, that would work out f swell. I mean, just you could just imagine how we, we can't even get along with, you know, Human beings that are only 20,000 years um, separated evolutionarily. And uh, you assholes think you're going to get along with something that's separated by billions of years of evolution? Get a clue, fuckhead. 
they're not going to be fuckable. They're not going to be <laughs> in any way um, compatible with your needs and desires and wants. Stupid asses. All most of you will be thinking is, is well, I wonder what they taste like barbecued. That's how fucking brilliant the human race is. Douchebag. Douchebag. Anyway. So in here it says this stupid thing. I just thought I would, you know, just, they can't even write something rational. With millions of Earth-like planets around suns like, star, like sun-like stars in our galaxy alone, why don't we see intelligent alien life? Or any other life for that matter. Mm. It gets especially weird when you factor in new scientific revelations that life on Earth occurred crazy fast. Crazy fast. So this is a scientist saying something like crazy fast. What it is is <laughs> there might be a probability, right? Let's say you have 1,000 jelly beans and there's one black one and all the rest are white or red or green. <clears throat> What's, you know... Would it be crazy fast if the first one you picked out was black? Would that mean crazy fast? Or would that be just as probable as the last jelly bean being black? Yes. So this, these are scientists and they don't even understand probability. You don't understand probability, I apparently douchebag. There's no such thing as crazy fast in the real universe when it comes to a probabilistic outcome. Just isn't retard. So anyway, let's play some of this stupid shit. So annoying. <sighs> yeah, there's reason to hate PBS. I now have one. I should play this, I guess, and it's the correct window. Let's see if it's bigger. Oh, good, it's broken. Super. Ah. <sighs> PBS. Someone might want to build and it's new. forcing me to watch an advertisement. It. It's not even a, Put a team click it to Put end it. it. It's forcing me to watch it. Yes, sir. In the public interest. I don't think so. I think you're in some kind of your own little cliche clitch interest. We, the propagandist for bullshit. Fuck you, PBS. Recent amazing discoveries have given us more hope than ever that our universe is full of life. Right, more hope than ever. Hope. People are hoping there's sharks and octopuses. Like I mean, I've been using octopuses a lot <laughs> just because octopuses are just this is this is the grand thing. Oh, I couldn't wait to be an octopus. Um, and they have you know they're they're young or born you know when they hatch they're octopuses. You know what I mean? They're not something else they have a full octopus brain they have to start being octopuses and there's thousands of them and after the first birthday first day after for the first 24 hours there's only hundreds and then after the second 24 hours there's only dozens yeah it's a mass slaughter so for every for every black jelly bean, yes, there's 4,000 little dead octopuses. So to get one to maturity, so we can lay some fucking eggs, you kill 4,000 children. Oh, yeah, let's have more of that in the universe. That sounds absolutely brilliant. I love dying 4,000 times for every time I successfully live. <laughs> yeah, that makes great sense. I can't wait to play that game. Yeah, you die at your 13th birthday in some horrible manner 4,000 times before finally you actually get to get laid. Oh yeah, I would run and grab that. Yeah, I'd go right for that if it was on the shelf. Oh, you people just, you're just so puke honorable. So why don't we see it? Because it doesn't exist. See, this is another thing you, you people just refuse to acknowledge is that life okay complex life just doesn't poof all right it really doesn't it takes a special circumstance a really unique circumstance almost almost and that lots of these events take place in our in what was our past history we won lots of lotteries in a row which is really 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 unlikely but yes it's like kind of 
going to New Jersey and saying the pick six and you win a million dollars and then you go to California and you win the picks 14 and you win 10 million dollars and then you go to Wyoming and you win the pick four and you win 68 dollars but I'm just saying it's like winning them three in a row or something it's really unlikely to get to this level of complexity because it requires all these one-time events neuron only happened one time neurons all of these zombie parts laying out there Billions of years of evolution. One neuron. One time. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of shit like that. The, the nucleus moving into the interior of the cell. You know, that holds the chromosomes. One time. Stuff. One time events. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, very scientific. Why don't we see aliens in Ask this question before here on Space Time. And if you haven't seen that episode, you should check it out. Oh, why? 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 So I can get more retarded by a bunch of stupid science? <laughs> Unscience? Yeah, let's call it that. It's unscience. But today, we'd like to go deeper because it really does seem like there should be aliens. The Kepler... It seems like there should be. If you're stupid. Now, if you're at all educated about what evolution is, and you have any knowledge of all these little evolutionary boundaries that have not been duplicated a single time on planet Earth that required one single aberration, only one aberration in that direction ever took place. Only one organism and all the organisms that ever existed manifested that particular thing and successfully, then you'll understand why there's no alien life. It's because it isn't like grass. <laughs> yeah, it's everywhere. Oh, dandelions. Yeah, well, it's not. It's more complicated. The Space Observatory has told us there are a couple of hundred billion nice watery planets in the Milky Way. And probably oh, yeah, I don't even know if that's true. Nice watery planets. I don't know. I don't. I think you're taking the science a little. You're stretching. You're stretching it a bit. But go ahead. Who cares? Go ahead and pretend. Billions of them are Earth-sized planets around sun-like stars. <clears throat> Many of them have been around long enough to produce a civilization that could have easily colonized the entire galaxy by now. So why is the Milky Way so un-Star wars -y? This genuine oddity is referred to as the Fermi Paradox, and the resolution for it has to be that there's some sort of great filter that either makes intelligent life extremely rare in the first place, or that wipes out essentially all advanced civilizations before they get to the galactic empire. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you play with either one of those two scenarios, right? I mean, obviously, you gain tools, you gain understanding of the universe, you mix the wrong chemicals together, you blow up the Earth. Yeah, that's right. And you're still stuck with that paradox, right, asshole? You, you can't give me any explanation of exactly how, when human beings are going to get past this idea, like, well, we'll just solve the problem by blowing them up. We'll kill them, and that'll solve the problem. Well, when does that stop working? When everybody has a handheld nuclear device? So, I mean, just get real. You can't have Star Wars because, guess what? Somebody like me <laughs> is going to take my little light cruiser and plow it right into your the Earth's vagina and blow the whole thing to hell. You're doomed. You're fucked. You ain't going nowhere from here except down the fucking slope. The slippery slope of your own delusions. Whether by nuclear war, environmental catastrophe, accidentally making a black hole that swallows the planet. Or willful, smart people will say, fuck you, quit playing fucking sadistic Frankenstein games with consciousness, you lunatics. You can't even figure out not to incarcerate, torture, enslave camps, sentient organisms, you motherfucking cunts. You're fucking basically Adolf fucking goddamn Hitlers, and somebody should just blow you a new asshole, you motherfucking cunt. You're torturing, insensitive, retarded, stupid motherfuckers. Why would anybody want you to succeed another day? Why would anyone want you to lay fucking eggs, you stupid fuck? Would you answer the question, please? Why would any rational person want you to lay a fucking egg, retard? 
I mean, look, you even have some genetic code in, in, in similar with pig. I mean, your face looks a little piggy. You got a little kind of a piggy fucking goddamn nose. Why don't you make a video about how pigs have a mammal's brain, you dumb fuck. And they feel, they have emotions, they have passions, they have a desire not to be fucking goddamn tortured and harmed, and yet you'll do it for your fucking breakfast. Why don't you explain how that's rational, you motherfucker? before you talk about having more assholes in space. Why the fuck would I have any daydreams about how wonderful it would be to have some more assholes who torture other sentient beings in space? Why the fuck would I want that, douchebag? Please, another question I'd like an answer to. PBS, could you please answer the question? Fucking cunts. Etc. Personally, I'm not buying it. <clears throat> oh, personally, I'm not buying it, because I'm a scientist, and I always say things like that. Personally, I'm not buying it, <laughs> because it's a personal issue. It's not a scientific question. <sighs> so he's not buying it, that uh, technology in the hands of organisms who are going to evolve by the same mechanism that evolved us, which is a fuck them, I have to win philosophy, psychology, mechanism, me good, them bad. That's what all the little evolving creatures basically have in their brain, jackass. Me first. That me first isn't essentially guaranteed to be you fail. I mean, really. Scientifically, we can understand that. Me first, in a bunch of things spinning around with nuclear bombs in their pocket, is going to lead to you all will fail. I don't think that there's an inevitable great filter still ahead of us. As we saw in a previous episode, we're not so far from building starships now. Oh, shut the fuck up. Starships. What the? Why are they allowing this? On, on why, why is PBS financing an idiot who would say something like that? We're not so far from breaking the light speed barrier. I mean, that's what a starship is, right? He believes that we can collect a bunch of magical stuff and transport across the universe, right? Faster than the smallest bit known to mankind, the photon. Yeah, we can go faster than photons. Sure we can. Fucking stupid. Bills. Surely some civilizations must make it through these growing pains and manage to reach the stars. Well, you really should be dealing with the opposite equation of that whole Fermi thing, which is nothing's ever going to get there in the first place, shithead. It's going to be an octopus or a barracuda or a tuna fish. That's going to be your intelligent life in the universe. It's going to be some sort of eating machine. That's what it's going to be. That's what the winners are going to be. The things with brains are usually the eating machines, jackass. And it's only by pure who the fuck knows why that our brain did that little silly manipulating thing where it decided, okay, let's start doing language and let's get all obtuse and eccentric. But that only happened once too. Like everything else, it's important. So, where are they? Well, there's another deeply sad and deeply inspiring possibility. So it's sad. Oh, let's all be sad. It's not sad that pigs are being tortured in concentration camps right this minute. Six billion organisms every day are being executed by the volition of the human fucking goddamn race. No, that's not important. Fuck no. <laughs> you know, it's much more important to talk this kind of nonsense. And be sad. Be sad because there's no area. Oh, for me to what? Sell widgets to and make a profit. Can't fuck their bitches. That's sad. Sad face. Sad face. No aliens to fuck. Deeply inspiring. Deeply inspiring. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait for that part. I doubt it, douchebag. Humanity may be one of the very first interstellar species in the history of the galaxy. It may be the very first, in spite of the fact that the universe is much older than the Earth. And 
your permutation argument <laughs> would be that it didn't do anything, it didn't do the thing it was capable of doing for a very long time, and then just waited until now to do it. Which is fine. It may be the own first and only. So I guess that'll be deeply inspiring. I, I think it's a good thing that we're the first and only and hopefully the last and never again organism that basically puts its own relatives in concentration camps and tortures them and then kills them for sandwiches. Convenience. A convenience food. But before we get all emo, let's science this right. We know about <clears throat> Before we get all emo... God, I hate this guy. Let's science this right. He dares to say that when he's already made these idiotic statements, right, uh, you know, just totally acknowledging that he doesn't even know what science is. He certainly doesn't know what probability is. Exactly one instance of intelligent life happening, the case of Earth. And as if it wasn't hard enough to do statistics with a sample size of one, we also have to deal with a massive selection bias. Of course we're going to observe at least one instance of intelligent life happening, because we are that one instance. You know, yes, that's right. So the person who wins the lottery thinks it's really easy. I've pointed that out myself. Yes. That's really easy to understand. That bias is really easy to see and say, oh, okay, I won't be fooled by that. But it's really easy to see. <laughs> yeah. And then you just say, well, what were the actual odds of me winning the lottery? Oh, 8,678,468 uh, to 1. And then you can say, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that was improbable, wasn't it? Wait, it doesn't matter how improbable sentience is. It doesn't matter how improbable it is. Well, I guess it does matter to some extent. To some extent. As long as it happens once, it will be there to observe itself. Right, okay, well that doesn't make much sense. Obvious, uh, quite obviously, if it happened, it happened. Yes, it did happen. We do exist. The question is, is there anything meritorious about our existence in the first place? And in the second place, holy shit, is this crap going to keep happening? Poor little animals eating each other for absolutely no function except to be annihilated eventually in some sort of cataclysm. Uh, yeah. Here we're touching on the anthropic principle, which states that an observer will always observe a universe that can make observers. <coughs> oh, gee, well, that's just so clever. You need scientists to tell you that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We witness being beings. <laughs> yeah. I am because I am. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, that's real scientific. Planet of death. We'll talk about the cosmic implications of this more in another episode. Oh dear, I have to wait for another episode. You're not even two minutes into this douchebag episode. You're just promising more brilliant insights. Oh, I just can't wait. Probably can't wait. But for now, we need to acknowledge that this selection bias allows that life could be extremely rare, or even unique. Given that, can we even begin to assess the likelihood of life out there? Yeah. He just said it was unique, and now we're going to assess the likelihood of it. How do you ex assess the likelihood of something unique? If it's unique, you can't have a likelihood anymore. It's over. It's done. It's finished. Retard. Uh, we can science anything. So, so again, he's calling this science. I don't think it's at all. I don't think it's science. Let's dig into whether we should really expect to see a Solarian Empire. Let's take the knowns. Now, this is going to smell like the Drake equation, I think. <laughs> yeah, I can smell the, the brownness already. There quite a number of very special conditions to build life. And it's hard to know how essential each of these was. Well, it's pretty easy to know that overall it's pretty much impossible in the sense that there's all these zombie parts. All these, all these amino acids, all this stuff is still here. And no other mixture combination of dna forms there's no other competing little organism pretty clearly doesn't get it hasn't happened twice in all the little nooks and crevices we don't find anything that isn't somewhere <laughs> um somewhere between us and the first living thing Somewhere on the branch, somewhere on that tree. There's no new tree anywhere. We don't find a new tree. 
Or how frequently these conditions are met through the galaxy? <coughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, you can sort of figure out that the galaxy doesn't, unlike Earth, the galaxy isn't covered with the building blocks of life, where the Earth has feet of building block. It's a junkyard. And, <laughs> yeah, so what are the odds of a car popping out? <clears throat> well, the universe doesn't even have a junkyard. We have lots of parts here, and yet life doesn't poof again. I'm going to avoid the details of the biology here. Okay, avoid the details of the biology. Well, I think the biology is essentially the definition of the living thing. Without the biology, the details of the biology, the subject of life is sort of non-existent. So, bravo. Change the subject, essentially. Right, buddy? I can say a lot, just based on how much time it took to get through each step on the path to building technological life. We can crudely... <sighs> you already said that, didn't he? Didn't he just say that? He just said it again. So they're going to crudely this Drake equation. So he, instead of just saying, I'm just doing this Drake equation bullshit, because everybody knows Drake equation is bullshit, he's just, he's just calling it science. We're going to sciencing. We're sciencing now. Summarize the big leaps that led up to intelligent life as, one, assembly of self-replicating RNA from organic molecules. Uh, okay. Good enough. Two, RNA-based protocells. Ah, uh, why not? <laughs> I don't think these are the biggies, but okay. DNA and the first actual cell. This is the moment of abiogenesis, life from not life. Well, there you go. That's a big one, yes. Four, increasingly complex single cells. Well, in, that that's just too vague, right? If it's increasingly complex means, yeah, that's where you go. You shoved a nucleus in there. The cells essentially became diverse enough that the cells infected each other and became complex because they basically became they basically became parasitical on each other. Five, the first multicellular organism, so plants, animals, etc. Yeah, see, I mean, that's, that was a huge leap. I mean, he just went right from like here, where you're talking about. Um, algae and he jumped to here and just skipped over sponges and all kinds of coral I mean there's the real foundations of um, you know the stuff that's been around a long long time so that's a bit of a cheat and six the first intelligent life oh well let's not even talk now I mean that was just no way you can do that fella <laughs> I mean, you just jump from fucking anemones to fucking human beings. I mean, what the hell is that? That is just such bullshit. That's really, that's just bullshit. I'm capable of counting to six on YouTube. Now, the crazy thing, the thing that I find the least intuitive, is that the first three steps in that chain combined, the appearance of true cellular life, have been faster than any of those later steps. Well, gee, that's just, the, the, the more complex things happen slower than the real simple things. Oh, gee, what a surprise. Who would have thunked? So fast, in fact, that it seems hard to believe. Well, I don't know. It doesn't seem at all difficult for me to believe it at all. I'd say, okay, there's a one in a thousand chance, and uh, yeah, the, on the third try, I pulled out the black jelly bean. Gee, I'm totally shocked. As a scientist, you shouldn't be. And, in fact, so fast that our galaxy probably should be brimming with at least simple life. Let me explain. See, around... No, no, no. See, see, this is just such bogus bullshit. I mean, to go to the chemical parts, you know, I mean, this isn't really the evolution of life, right? This is to the evolution of chemistry to get to life. And, <laughs> frankly, you have enough problems figuring out how you do that first neuron thing twice, where you haven't done it twice. So, no second neuron. No second brain function. No, no mechanism ever developed that could be <clears throat> described as neural networky kind of stuff, doing the thinking thing, except neurons. A completely neuron-dependent system. So you haven't got, you, you know, those are the important hurdles, buddy. Fella. Four billion years ago, pretty much just after the Earth had first cooled down from being a giant hellish magma ball, we think that it totally got pounded by a meteor... Totally that lasted a couple of hundred million years. This is the late heavy bombardment. Right, so that's the chemically active moment, right? Where lots of 
flashy electrical this that and a lot of stuff shooting about and all that kind of crap uh, really the atmosphere being formed blah 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 yeah it sounds like a time where you might cook yourself a fucking dna molecule probably obliterated the surface we think we know this because we flew to the moon and found evidence of it up until recently well i don't know you found evidence of it huh the earliest known evidence of life dated to roughly 3.5 billion years ago Fossilized blue green algae beds, stromatolites, found in Western Australia. The place was covered in this greenish purple slime that reeked of rotten eggs. Yeah, the beach was horrible back then. Basically, Earth was once a giant slime ball planet. And it looks like Earth went from magma ball to slime ball in less than 300 million years. Wow, yeah, 300 million. You know, that's how long that is. That's a really long time. See, and he's calling that like a flash. It just happened. Wow, pew, that bad. 300 million years. It's a long time, asshole. What? That seems crazy fast. But it also... Uh, again, so that seems crazy fast to you? 300 million years seems crazy fast to you? I mean, the whole universe is only 15 billion years old, and he's saying it's crazy fast to do something in 300 million. I mean, that's like 10%, fuckhead. It doesn't sound crazy fast. I mean, doing something... I mean, going 10% faster doesn't seem like that would be crazy fast. Yes, that this first step, the genesis of life, is not the great filter. But wait, the abiogenesis... <coughs> it's not the great filter. Well, see, again, so he's <coughs> straw man the subject. I don't think anybody's arguing that the formation of a DNA molecule was the great obstacle that was never, um, you know, that's the, 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 the thing that prevents life from existing. Not only is the, the existence of the molecule, it's the existence of the molecule as a blueprint is the real, that's the real tricky. I mean, that's the part where it all becomes interesting. A DNA molecule replicating doesn't have much interest. A DNA molecule replicating instructions on how to build a DNA molecule replicating, that's significant. It gets even weirder. See, nature has provided us with the perfect time capsule for studying the very early Earth. Zircons. Super hard, silica crystals whose formation can be dated precisely by the ratio of decaying uranium versus lead decay product locked inside. And get this. Okay, just get this. Just recently, a zircon was found containing the possible signature of life. Okay, here we go. So they found a zircon. I guess it's got uh, you know, some radioactive elements in it. Okay. Well, well, anyway, I haven't heard of zircons before, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know, carbon dating is okay with me. And dated at 4.1 billion years ago, from before the late heavy bombardment. That little crystal contains what looks like biogenic carbon. That's a fancy way of saying there's... Well, if it looks like it, I don't know if that's really being Mr. Science. Lots of stuff looks like stuff. I can smear some shit on the wall and it could look like something. That doesn't mean it isn't shit. Too little carbon-13 compared to carbon-12. See, photosynthetic life finds C12 a bit yummier, and so it absorbs more of that than the heavier C13. Pretty much all carbon enters the biosphere from the photosynthesizing bottom of the food chain. Any carbon has been through living systems. All right, see, this is a little dangerous right here, right? Living systems, because, you know, the first atmosphere wasn't the same as this atmosphere. So the fact that it was still carbon-based life, it still, it wasn't oxygen. Oxygen wasn't the byproduct. I, oxygen was the byproduct, not the fuel. So, I mean, it was a backwards from what it was now. So I don't know if these assumptions are at all valid because obviously you would use carbon quite differently. Perhaps the first life forms may have consumed carbon quite differently than the current life forms. And to say photosynthesis, you're already assuming life forms that can accomplish that task. We'll have the same C13 light isotopic ratio that we see in this zircon. Now, there are other non-biogenic explanations, but this is extremely... Okay, so there are other explanations, but he's going to tell us, okay, life existed while the Earth was being heavily bombarded by asteroids and shit. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't really have a problem with that, okay? I mean, to tell me that green slime can survive boiling water, I could say, sure, I've seen it. I've seen stuff living in... 
I've been to Yellowstone and I've seen the hot springs and they have all kinds of little freaking wigglies in there. So sure, why not? Suggested that life was abundant on Earth. <clears throat> well, maybe abundant is a tricky word, but anyway, I mean, you see it in those vents in the ocean too, you know, sulfuric acid, horrid sulfur crap shit, and the stuff is living on that crap. I mean, it's living on a rather hostile diet, hostile to us. Remarkably soon after it first coalesced from stardust. So again, this whole video is just about how fast life um, arose after the great smashering. And he thinks that's the important thing here. That's somehow the, whoa, God must have done it, I guess, huh? Is it way, whoa, shut up, way too early. There's no early, there's no late. There's circumstances. Yes, there's a specific circumstance required. The circumstance existed, it happened. I think that's... I think the subject is now complete. <laughs> yeah. No more information required. But life either survived the late heavy bombardment or formed again after that. Or the late heavy bombardment never happens. That's actually... Oh, gee. No, is this what you give a shit about? I don't really think so. Life happened and then it was destroyed and then it happened again. I don't think that's a viable theory. The possibility too. But either way... It looks like Earth became a slime ball, teeming with life. Well, why just say slime ball in the right way and say uh, th there was no oxygen in the atmosphere, uh, ammonia gases, all kinds. It was a completely different living environment. Chemically, completely different. Then people could understand that, well, a few meteorites falling in that shit, who the fuck cares? I mean, if it's surviving in ammonia, uh, I guess it could survive lots of shit. There's no living thing going to survive in it now crazy short amount of time. How on earth did this happen? Two options. One. God. Given the right conditions, the genesis of life happens like that. And two. <laughs> I don't think these are the only two options. I mean, really. It's just silly. It happens like that. Given the right conditions. Well, gee, isn't that given the right conditions? <laughs> yes, I own the winning lottery ticket. It seems like the right conditions that I'm going to win the lottery. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Given the right conditions, does that really make any sense to say? I mean, does this mean anything? Given the right conditions, obviously, yes, then it'll happen. But right conditions are what? I mean, obviously, they're kind of specific right conditions. They're not vague, general right conditions. They really aren't. I mean, obviously, the condition of having an ocean is certainly a condition you could say, well, that's a prerequisite to living things, a water ocean. Um, but obviously a lot more is needed, right? You're, it's never going to happen if you don't have, like, say, salt in the water, or the, the, the elements that are going to make it possible for you to make a DNA molecule. If they're not there, you're not going to be able to make a DNA molecule, no matter how long that condition exists. So it's not right conditions, it's complete conditions. Life was seeded from space. Ah, <clears throat> jeez. Oh, and how did it get into space? Well, oh, gee, I guess it happened the same way it happened here. But this whole idea that um, complex compounds have much chance of surviving interplanetary space travel is just kind of silly. A vehicle, panspermia. Look, there's no question that lots of rockets ejected into space after meteor impacts and can move between planets. We found plenty of meteorites originally from Mars. A lot of the ejector from Earth is going to be swarming in bugs. Quits. Swarming, I don't you know, again, this, this, this vernacular I just don't think is at all useful. I, and I don't think you have any evidence that anything does this. Small meteorites get very, very hot coming through the atmosphere of almost any kind of gravity. So, especially the ones coming here, they're going to get... Just your little life things are not going to survive. 700 degrees. Similar bacterial astronauts have once survived an interstellar journey to Earth. Some bacteria are certainly hardy enough to survive launch and landing. This has been tested. If these bacteria... I don't think it really has been tested, so I think that's a bunch of shit. What they figured out is that there's crannies, nooks and crannies on like space shuttles in between the tiles and stuff where crap and sludge can stay 
and so then the stuff doesn't get constantly pressurized and depressurized. It doesn't get it doesn't get impacted by the heat and all that kind of crap. But no one's put biological life on a rock, shot it into space, then allowed the rock to fall back to Earth naturally and survive. That they haven't done. So don't tell me they've done the experiment, fuckhead. They really haven't. They really haven't. Stick a rock on a stick outside of one of those rockets. <laughs> okay, yeah, we, know we don't come back to Earth anymore, right? So nothing comes back anymore. <laughs> right? Well, I guess we, we must bring those guys on the space station back. Yeah, stick a little stick outside the rocket that's coming back, right? I don't know what's picking them up anymore. I guess it's like, I don't know, the old moon rockets or something. What do they use? It limbs? What, what are re-entry devices? What are they, well, I guess they're the Russian re-entry devices. Anyway, yeah, have a stick and put a rock on the end of it with some, uh, you know, whatever, living stuff and see if it survives on the rock. They were frozen solid. They could plausibly survive a very, very long journey and you only need one out of billions to make it. Maybe the solar wind pushes infested material into interstellar space. Oh, again, who cares? Again, I, I mean, do I, do I really, is it really interesting to speculate on on rocks from planet um, slime? So a rock got shot from planet of the slime, came to Earth, and made more slime. And then the slime evolved on Earth. That makes the story of our existence somehow more interesting. I mean, I guess it's an added detail, <laughs> but does it change any of these questions at all? It still had to be created on planet slime. Does that tell us anything? No, it doesn't tell us a dot goddamn thing. I mean, there's just absolutely no evidence that that's how life formed on Earth. No evidence whatsoever. So this is just, let's just make up some shit. Uh, it could be. Lots of things could be. It's, it's not even the could be part. That's, but no, it's just the why, how could it possibly make a difference? It doesn't imply intelligent life. Primitive life arriving on Earth doesn't imply the existence of intelligent life in the universe. So the tens of thousands, even millions of years later, <laughs> A single bug winds up on a brand new planet and boom, instant slime ball. Mm, questionable. But it would mean that life only needs to evolve once from scratch in any given Well, process. great. So it's questionable. Be very testable. <coughs> and yet he Earth brings it up. Far. And it's somehow testable. No, it's not testable. So that means this stuff should be out there. Mars must have been hit when it had water. Did it go slime ball? There should be something like stromatolite fossils on its ancient surface. We haven't seen them yet, but they'd be hard to spot. These cosmic cooties should be findable in space, too. So. <clears throat> yeah, but your theory, I guess, what's the point? Again, if Mars did have life on it, then there's just more evidence of how the universe just couldn't care less. and It's just going to exterminate it uh, just as likely as not. So, again, it doesn't do anything for your life existing in the universe theory in the sense that it's all going to get annihilated anyway. And we already know about Mars is that it doesn't have a magnosphere, so it has no protection from radiation. So the idea that you could even <coughs> implant life on Mars, obviously you couldn't do the reverse. We couldn't send some life to Mars and have it grow there because it's going to get irradiated to death. Oh, either fast abiogenesis or panspermia, one of them must be true. Uh, fast I a biogenesis, again, this means absolutely nothing. That's just a silly concept. This fastness of probabilistic equations would be just silly. It would be silly to, again, say, to think there's some sort of requirement that um, things are only supposed to happen at average speed. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. That would be silly. However, both suggest that the galaxy should be teeming with slimeball planets. I don't think both suggest that. I don't think either one suggests that. As just pointed out, for a planet to be able to be infected by a complex biological mechanism, the, it must have a condition that's giving the biological mechanism things called fuel and some sort of survivable environment. And there's lots of things that kill complexity, like radiation. 
don't have the telescope to find them yet, but we could soon. These planets will have atmospheres driven by biotic processes. If we could analyze light passing through these atmospheres, you would see signatures of oxygen, ozone, methane, nitrous oxide at concentrations impossible without a biosphere. <coughs> well, I don't think we can even know that for sure anyway. I, I mean, the, the mixture of compounds on planets, we already see this variability from Saturn to Jupiter to Neptune to Mars to Mercury to Venus. They all have different chemistry, so I don't think there's any point in saying, ah, we'll figure out what has life on it based on what chemicals it has on it. I mean, that just seems a little bogus. NASA and its terrestrial planet finder, and we could find extraterrestrial life within 20 years. So it's in... Ah, right, sure we could. Highly possible that we'll soon discover that the galaxy is filled with life. But this just makes it... Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, filled with sharks. Cool. Mowable grass. There's lots of grass out there for us to go cut. Yeah, that would be so cool. We make all kinds of big bucks cutting grass. Yeah. Weirder that the Milky Way isn't swarming with ancient alien civilizations. There is a... It's even weirder. Weirder and weirder. I hate fucking Australia. Filter. But it's not the genesis of life. The clue might be that the Earth stayed a slime ball for nearly three billion years. The first multicellular organism... Yeah, it took a very, very long time for it to get around to... Hey, let's get more complicated. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah, it was kind of dumb, so it didn't know. It didn't know what it was missing out on. Yeah, if we get really smart, then we can incarcerate each other in concentration camps, torture each other, and then slaughter each other for food. Yeah, it'd be really fun. Turned up only six to eight hundred million years ago, and life as we know it quickly exploded after that. Was this a... Um, again, quickly, by whose definition? Took a long time to get the dinosaur. The lucky event that we just had to wait for? No. Multicellular life evolved <sighs> independently dozens of times. It just took a really long time for those single cells to become complex enough to form large collaborative structures capable of collective reproduction, i.e. Uh, collective reproduction? I don't think that has anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I really don't think orgies were the first sex, but whatever, go ahead. Theorize away. Animals, a species capable of making the Kerbal Space Program. And speaking of space programs... I don't know what he just said there, right? But I, don't, I think it was wrong, right? I think he said that wrong. I'm pretty damn sure. Logical life took a little while longer, but not really so long on the overall scale. Once we had complex life, after the Cambrian explosion, it was only around half a billion years to go from jellyfish to moon landing. Of course, <clears throat> only a half a billion years. Wow, that's like so quick. So, 15 billion year old universe, and then he's talking about a half a billion years. Like, oh, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, it's like 7%. It's a pretty long time. Of course, maybe the emergence of intelligence is a random and unlikely event. And this one is the hardest to assess. Random and unlikely. Random. There's so, well, scientists would know there's no such thing as random. Really, really, there isn't. Pure random is not a possibility. All you can do is simulate random. But there is no such thing as a pure random. Uh, unlikely, yes. That's the probabilistic thing. Yeah. So it's improbable for you to win every lottery in the United States taking place in the next week. That's really unlikely. Yeah. It's really unlikely to even be able to accomplish the task of being entered in every lottery. And then just think about how hard it would be to win them all. But that's how unlikely life could be. Really, 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 really intelligent life could be. Really, 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 really unlikely. However, it's worth noting that we do have other species on Earth that seem to be moving down the same big brain <clears throat> path. Well, again, see, you're, you have this delusion that big brain means smart brain. No, it just means tool-equipped brain. It just means, like, they might have a big brain because they're doing all this sonar shit, and so they have to process all this sonar into images, and that takes more brain space to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Size doesn't really make a difference. I mean, it makes it some difference. Okay, size is like... Um, 
maybe how much memory you have or how big the hard drive is. But the thing that's really making the thing work is the operating system. And that's the only distinction between human beings and chimpanzees, for example. It's not the size of our brain, it's the capacity of our brain, in the sense that we mature very slowly and then we install a vocabulary, and installing vocabulary makes the whole thing work. Without it, there's no operating system, then this, this, the computer stays pretty stupid. If it's just running DOS, it doesn't, doesn't go very far. It needs a Windows. Intently of humans. So what is the great filter? Maybe it's just time. <clears throat> no. I, I mean, see, he says the great filter. No, the great filter is a bunch of events. So again, there's no one event that's the great filter. The great filter is made out of a whole bunch of events. And one of those events was the creation of a neuron. No other organism, besides ones with neurons, are doing brains. There's no brains made out of some other kind of cell. Just neurons. It's those kinds of events that are the great filter. And there's a bunch of them. One-time events. It is common that of the billions of Earth-like planets in the galaxy, only a tiny fraction needed to have a small head start on us in order to have produced the Federation of Planets and Stargates and stuff by now. <clears throat> Right, so now you're hitting the second part of the equation, which is the dumbasses will, if they don't figure out that they're just diluted psychologies, you know, gratifying, you know, motivations that have their origin in testicles and such, um, you know, there's no grand plan, then they just end up being feeding machines with weapons. And so having a bunch of weapon-equipped, egomaniacal, selfish, uh, gratifying, seeking machines out to get it for themselves, me first, bunch of me firsters, well, you're not going to do any of this federation of planet crap if you're me firsting. It's just not going to happen. You'll blow each other up. You'll shoot each other in the fucking head. Thank goodness. So what if humanity started it all? Of all of the sun-like stars and Earth-like planets that will ever form over the full past and future history of star formation in our universe, Earth is early. It's part of the first eight percent. I don't know if you mean know, like, helping that to guess uh, based on what? Yeah, I don't think you know that answer, fella. I don't think you know how, how long it's going to take the universe to run out of gas. But go ahead. Guess away. Ten. According to recent Hubble Space Telescope-based calculations, uh, the telescope does not do calculations, so that's just, <laughs> this is a silly thing to say. But whatever, go ahead, play the game. We have emerged in the epoch of life, in a universe abundant in the rich resources of past supernova explosions. Uh, so what? Planet Earth is covered, 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 covered in DNA and amino acids and all kinds of the soup of life and all that kind of shit, and guess what? Nothing else is growing here but our descendants. There's no second generation. But after the violence of the Starburst and Quasar epochs, it strains believability to imagine that life didn't fall. Well, whatever. I don't see how it strains it at all. Again, if you recognize that, yes, winning every lottery in the universe would be really difficult. I mean, you just have no way of knowing how many impossible odds life had to transcend to end up in this position at this particular time. So again, as long as you're going to keep denying the billions and billions of improbability points that are stuck in our lineage, then yes, your amazement may be relevant if you're just going to deny that the odds against were basically where there have been billions and trillions of permutations on Earth and nobody's ever flipped. It's only heads or tails. There's no... How come there's no middles, midsies? These are not on the coin, you jackass. Won't happen elsewhere, but it is possible. Oh, I just, I, oh, I just I really hate this guy. Possible that we are a very early outlier, and that any other civilization. Yeah, blah blah blah. It is possible that you have Twinkies up your ass. Things are so distant as to not yet be apparent. Is humanity a first-generation intelligence? One bad haircut. What is this whole casual look thing, too? I'm a scientist. <laughs> yeah. 
one of the species that will watch and maybe guide as other intelligent life emerges throughout the galaxy. Well, there's something to work for. Blah, 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 blah. Do you know what the fuck he's talking about? I have no clue. Bibble babble. On the next episode of Space Time. Last week, we talked about Miguel Alcubier's warp drive. You guys had a lot to say. Let's oh, look. yeah. A lot of you noticed my mistake in saying that Miguel Alcubier is Spanish rather than Mexican. And that was my mistake. <laughs> oh, it's the Mexicans. Oh, and the Mexicans are going to invent warp drive. They can't figure out how to use a condom, but they got that warp drive thing figured out. Oh, yeah, sure they do. We cram a lot of details into each episode of Space Time, and sometimes things like this do slip through. So thank you for catching it. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, I'd say you also made a hell of a lot of mistakes in this episode. I wonder, where, where can I submit all the catches to? Miguel Alcubier was in fact a boy in Mexico and in fact educated up to master's level there. Eric Villas wonders what it would look like seeing an Alcubier warp bubble race by from the outside. A uh, warp bubble. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just, let's just deny reality. I mean, it just really, I mean, they've taken this, this nonsense so far where they just think space can be just stretched any moment they want to or and this and this and... Yes, yeah, so we'll just break all these fundamental rules that are guiding big giant planets and all that kind of stuff because we're just going to make up bullshit that somehow the Earth will... Yeah, we'll just, we'll just put it in the transporter, you know, and shoot the Earth way across the whole fucking galaxy and pop it on some other star. Sure you will. I mean, just absolute bullshit. This is tricky. The bubble would definitely leave some sort of light signature because light inside the bubble can traverse the walls in any direction besides forwards. <laughs> well, it can't if it's going faster than the speed of light because then it can't manufacture light because you can't fucking have a gun anymore when all the molecules that make up the gun are moving faster than the speed of light Then the gun's not a gun anymore, it's light. So it can't shoot anything anymore. Light is manufactured by matter. Light is just a vibration, just a frequency of quanta, all right? And something can't produce a frequency of quanta if it's already moving the speed of light, because then it's light. It's not matter anymore. Matter can't go fast. Can't, 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 can't. It can't go any faster. Matter can't go as fast as light. That's just a rule, because then it's light again. See, if the matter's going as fast as light, then it's not matter, it's light. And light doesn't shoot guns, or jerk off, or do anything, because light doesn't have any form, because it's light, moving in a frequency, in a direction, as fast as it can. It can't do anything else, but it's doing one thing. It's like dancing again. I'll use the dancing analogy. If I'm dancing as fast as I can, and somebody says, move to the left, okay, well, then I have to slow down how fast I'm dancing. But if somebody says, move to the left, the speed of light, then I can't dance at all. Get it? Yeah. And our negative mass matter may also end up on the outside. Because the bubble is superluminal, any light that we see... Superluminal? Well, gee, I don't know what that is, scientific. What's a superluminal? I don't know. Wow, it's superluminal. The superluminal worm bubble. Cool. Let's make up some more bullshit call it science would trail the bubble just like the sound of a supersonic jet ahead of the bubble you'd see nothing unless it stopped in which case all the photons and yeah whatever see th but this is just again all kinds of rubbish this is just like the stupid black hole theory that the light photons are being pulled back by the gravity no it doesn't happen light is not affected by any force in the universe Light is quanta. Quanta is not inhibited by anything existing in the universe, except by the kinetic reactions it has in its field of quanta. But that's it. You can't break that physics, physicist. Uh, Till next time. Enough. No.